Okay, this is my video for it. Let's do something basic with GeoGebra. I want to make a times table quiz with some visuals and feedback. So I go to GeoGebra and I look for something like what I want to do. I pull this up. It's not exactly what I want it to look like. but I'll work on that. Since this is all open source and shareable, I can go over here, open in app. It opens my very own copy to play with, modify, whatever. If this weren't mine already, it would make a new copy. Now I can now view the algebra and the construction protocol. So this is how this was made. It's 19 steps. I can rewind it and I can retrace my process for creating this. The first step was making a number that's going to be my first factor to multiply. Right now it says 7. I'll be setting it with random numbers later. But the app I modeled this after did this this way, so I am too. The sequence to my steps might seem a little odd, but when I tried to replicate it in a more sensible order, variables were recreating themselves. So sequence obviously matters, and I'm not sure why. Now, let me look at the settings for this. That's clear. I could make it show up. I don't want to because it's my invisible factor. Now, this won't always work, but I'll explain that later. My second step is to create the times tables. I make a sequence. This is what I would type in. It's a nested sequence. Sequence of a sequence and I'm going to have my first letter plus times my second factor. So this is going to be a text version of my times table that I will turn into numbers later and it loops from 0 to 10 and that loops from 0 to 10. Now if I click away it shows me that nested array. I can't pull things from it nicely if it's nested so my next step is to flatten it. I just say flatten and that creates a new array that's just one long list of all the times tables. Now step four in my version here is a shorter one that is just the nines times tables and we're going to ignore that for now. So step five, this is where the excitement happens. This is my button. Now it won't show in algebra unless I go over here and say please show me your auxiliary options. Then the settings tell me, and that's where I, when I see something, I need to check the settings. I named it Button New Problem. I played with the text to make it large. I can play with the color. And scripting is where the action is. Update Construction does things like when I generate random numbers, it generates new ones. My other commands are taking my text and turning them into numbers. And when I actually constructed this, I made the button first and then added the scripting as I made the variables. Otherwise, it will give me error messages because it doesn't think I have the variables. Another important thing, right now I could click on new problem, nothing happens. I have to turn off the settings and then, and it's only going to act like I have these five steps. It doesn't know about the other 14, so psh, error. Now that won't show up when I'm done because it will know the rest is there. So I go back to my settings and I am parsing to number. I type parse to number to change text to, to numerical ideas and the first argument is the place where that number is going to go. So I've got the first number waiting for it here. 
and then the second argument is the thing that's going to happen. And what I want to do is take the first two characters from picked problem. Happily, spaces are just ignored. So 10 is 10 and 4 is 4. And then the second parse does exactly the same thing to the last two characters. So that space and that 0, or if it's 10, it'd be the 1 and the 0. Then, since this is a new problem, I haven't asked to check the answer yet. I haven't put input in yet. And I do, right now, want to show my cute array that will come later. So, next we're going to see how to make these actually happen. Next video.